Hi, everybody. It's Thursday, and it's time for your weekly dose of Future Law Bootcamp. I'm your host, Joe Borstein, CEO of LexFusion and certified total freak about legal innovation. Today, I'm honored to be here with Elizabeth Bykoff, also known as EB, hey. and Danielle Haugland, um, both of Agile Oft, and we're going to talk about their journey and their adventure in the world of contract lifecycle management. Um, as you all know, on Future Law, the lawyers of today meet the change makers. Sorry, the lawyers of tomorrow meet the change makers of today. Um, we're going to discuss the tectonic forces bubbling under the surface of the $800 billion legal industry. Um, we got globalization, allowing lawyers and other professionals from all over the globe to work seamlessly on legal tasks. We have technology automating the routine processes of today and uh, relentlessly creeping up that value chain, dabbling in more and more sophisticated legal tasks. Um, we have the status quo of legal regulation being questioned and challenged, um, which is allowing other professionals other than lawyers to work alongside us um, and solve legal problems at scale, which we think can be super exciting. Um, finally, we have outside investment pouring in. These investors see an opportunity to make a broken system better. Um, and as futurist Peter Diamantes likes to say, if you wanna make a billion dollars, go out and help a billion people. That stuck with me. Law affects everybody, um, every single person on this planet. So there are a lot of people to help, a lot of money to make in the process. So whatever your, drives you, idealism, greed, or just excitement, um, I always beg all lawyers to pay a little bit of attention to what the change makers are doing in the legal innovation space, and you might just find your purpose. So again, today, we're here with EB um, and Danielle Haugland. Um, EB, can we, can we start with you today? Sure, absolutely. Okay, fantastic. So you are the Vice President of Alliances and Partnerships, correct? That's right. Tell us a little bit about that role and what that means. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the role is, I've been in the CLM space for a while now, and uh, as Eric Laughlin and Kevin Niblock were brought in in Agileoff, they, um, they, I got a call and they asked me to come and help out from a go-to-market. I think, you know, partnership and alliances is really, really important in the SaaS space, not just the CLM or legal tech space, right, in general. I think most uh, successful software companies have built extremely well-oiled partnerships, uh, and that's what, you know, with the help of Danielle and the rest of the team, we're really trying to do here at Agileoft and, and partnering with, with companies like LexFusion, right? They're working with you, right? <laughs> so it's fun. No, I, lo I, I love it. I mean, obviously, LexFusion was a company built in a way on the, on the partnership model. Um, in, in Japan, there, there's a, a business concept called Koretsu, which is basically a loose alliance of non-competitive companies. Um, and the first time I read about it, it was... It was very eye-opening, this idea that um, you could compete just as hard as everybody else, be a true capitalist, but also uh, set up friendly alliances where, where everybody helps one another um, it, it is a really uh, satisfying way to do business and also a great way to grow. Um, so CLM generally, a, a space that you said you've been in for a very long time, uh, is finally as hot as the hype that's been around it for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's been crazy, right? Since last year, I mean, you've seen the announcement one after the other, whether it's, I mean, some of our competitors, right? Ironclad and iCertis. Um, I might get slapped on the wrist to mention them, but that's, that's the reality of the market, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a very exciting space. Um, it's very fragmented too, right? I mean, you see a lot of providers uh, that fulfill different requirements, uh, different part of the market. Uh, and, but there's a lot of interest, right? And because we know there's a lot of things that can be beneficial for the legal community in general and the, what I call the adjacent teams that legal counsel or GCs work with, right? The sell side, the procurement side. Uh, and I think, you know, what I've been telling the team also and telling my leadership team is it's, it's hot, it's a lot of interest, but who's gonna win, right? <laughs> Who really is going to win in the market? And I think it's going to be really the, the company that manages execution well, right? Whether it's the customer experience they provide, really understanding who they cater to, um, the easiness of working with us, buying from us, getting support from, from us, and you know, hopefully Agile up. We're just going to kick, you know, kick and kick ask. Am I allowed to say that, Joe? I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm comfortable. Um, and I think it's going to be really that, right? Who's going to execute and really listen to what the needs are out there? and cater to the legal community uh, and, you, and really bring, uh, bring them back to the, for, you know, to the fold and being really business partners. And I think that's going to be the fun, the fun, yeah, fun journey. 
I, I want to even zoom in on, on one point you just made there. Um, on my last trip to CLOCK, a corporate legal operations consortium, um, which if, no, if anyone's listening and hasn't been, is one of the most fantastic conferences every year that we don't have a pandemic. Um, I, uh, the last time I went, I was literally shocked by the number of, I won't say CLM companies, because I think when we say CLM, we mean, you know, uh, a, a technology that sits across the enterprise, but yeah. contracts adjacent technologies, whether it was building, redlining, uh, sorting, filtering, um, it, it was just unbelievable. It, it seemed to have almost eclipsed electric discovery as the uh, uh, vendor du jour. <laughs> now, yeah. you, you used the word, and I loved it, fragmented. For, from an out, and not that I'm a total outsider, obviously. I've, I've played in the world of CLM for a long time, but, but I don't specifically work at a CLM company. Why? Why is this, why is this such a fragmented market room? That's a good question. Uh, I'm sure Danielle might also have a perspective on that. I think I think when you see all those players at clock, right, all these software provider, um, I think we all started with a niche, right? Uh, in the sense of like, we're gonna focus on something we think we can do really, really well. Um, and I think that's what you're seeing, that fragmentation. I think you're also seeing, uh, at least not on just the adjacent software, right? Obligations management, matter management, you know, um, just even in CLM, it's fragmented, right? You have providers for sell side, you have provider for buy side, right? The focus has also, you know, who can really be the contract, quote unquote, cloud, right? Who can really cater to every side of the business, even employment contract? I think what you're seeing is there's fragmentation around the focus that each of those providers in CLM have, have had. And then there's also be focus on the rest and saying, you know what, we're going to be the specialists or the number one in matter management. We're going to be the number one in this. It's great because then each of those companies, including ourselves, have really built the close to best in breed, right? For that specific part of the market. But, you know, buyers don't think about it that way, right? They start somewhere and then they're like, well, what do you do this? Can I also extend the platform to do that? Right. And so I think as we're seeing fragmentation, I think, and, and again, this is a guess, you know, don't quote me, please do not take any bet on the market uh, on based on what I say. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing consolidation, right? Like companies that decide to start with partnerships and then they acquire each other because it just makes sense. Their products complement each other. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that could happen. I Again, I'm not betting my shirt on it, but you know, it, it could happen. No, I mean, look, uh, when LexFusion was scanning the market, we saw a, a number of products that, that, that we believed were, were better than the status quo. And amongst other things, as, especially the team, this team, Eric Laughlin, um, one of the things that we liked about it, and full disclosure, like it's a, a member company of LexFusion, um, was uh, a, a vision of interoperability and the ability to, to snap in, and I think Danielle, we'll talk about this a little more later, mm -hmm. snap into other tools and technologies, but also snap into the uh, existing workflows that yeah. lawyers were already using. Um, having yeah. sold into the legal space for longer than I'd like to admit, um, I, I deeply believe in meeting lawyers where they work. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a few more questions for you, EB, but let's switch to Danielle for a minute. Yeah. Um, Danielle, you are yes. Agilof's Global Alliance Director. Tell yes. everybody what that means for a second. Uh, <laughs> I'm sort of figuring out out still as I go. Um, so a bit of background, uh, I, I was an antitrust lawyer um, for the bulk of my career and uh, recently, well, recently, uh, the past five years or so, um, switched over to kind of the legal tech, legal innovation side. Um, and this is my first stint at a software company, uh, a technology company. I was you know, primarily on the services side. Um, so uh, I'll tell you what it means to me. Um, mm -hmm. It means that I get to work with our amazing global partners, including LexFusion, uh, you know, other large legal services providers, um, many of whom, you know, I have a, a, I have an existing relationship or had an existing relationship before I joined uh, Agileoft. Um, so I view my job as to support our partners, um, supporting them in understanding what Agileoft provides, supporting them in going to the market, supporting them um, if, you know, if they ever need a shoulder to cry on, I'm there. Basically kind of their one-stop shop for... <laughs> their one-stop shop for, you know, 
if they if they need something uh, within Agileoft, I'm kind of the point of contact that uh, that introduces them to the company at large. And and you all have rolled out a new partnership program. Uh, tell us about that. Um, actually, I'm going to let Elizabeth talk about the new partnership program because she oversees everything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we did. We did. Uh, that's great. Great segue. Uh, we launch. We we relaunch our partnership program in December. Um, that was one of the you know marching orders we got because we really do believe in in partnership first, right? Uh, I think I mentioned that at the beginning, and it's mm -hmm. it's really important for us to have. Um, to have partners with us. I think that's going to be our, our, our growth. We want to grow together with our partners. Uh, so we did that. And uh, what we did is really putting a little bit more structure. And, you know, Danielle is here to drive all our global services partners. So whether the Deloitte's of the world, you know, whether their consulting side or their legal business services side, you know, really building on those relationships and uh, doing great things together, not just from a selling, but also developing a joint solution potentially that tackles an industry, a specific market. So, you know, we're also in discussion uh, around adding even more value into Agileoff through that their, you know, their best practice, what they see in the industry, anything that they've run into, right? So that's really number one. Uh, we have a reseller program, uh, which is really, you know, in some geographies, we don't have Agileoft yet. So they really help us address, reach that market until we potentially get into the market ourselves. So, you know, they are value added resellers. They sell it, they implement it. They have, they own the full customer relationship, really helping those GCs at companies um, internationally and on how to leverage Agileoft uh, the best way possible. Um, and then we have what we call technology partners, which is, you know, I wouldn't say table stakes, but it is the CRMs of the world, the procurement uh, softwares of the world. So Salesforce, um, AWS, which were built on top of, you know, Microsoft, uh, you, you, right. you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So these are really the partners that, um, we want to, that enhance our platform, but also help extend the value prop for the GCs and sales and procurement on being able to really have end to end legal processes, not just CLM, like you said, Joe earlier, but end to end legal processes that might start in Agileoft and end somewhere else. Right. And yep. all have that data you know, connected and visible, transparent, and they can drive insights from through the whole um, legal process. So, and then we have referral partners, but I don't, I don't need to mention them, right? I think they're called Lex Fusion and some other ones. And, <laughs> Sounds like a bunch so of those words. ones, you know, it's kind of, no, I don't need to mention them, right? No, that's <laughs> not fair. I mean, you, you're great guys. I mean, you're a little bit, I see you like an extension of our team, to be very honest. It's not fair to say, you know, it's just a partnership. Uh, and that's also something that, you know, we're really, looking forward to developing with you and some of the, the other Lex Fusion members uh, because it's a little bit of one of our differentiators that I know some of our competitors don't have at all. They don't leverage. I haven't been at Aptis slash now Conga. I know that. Uh, so, you know, this is another thing that we're really looking to, to bring to bear is working more closely with you guys because you just, you're, you've lived it, right? You know what you, we need and it's, it's great. It's just, it's just awesome. So. And wait till the pandemic ends and we can have some Lex Fusion parties finally. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, time time's time sticking, right? That's right. right? <laughs> so Danielle, we're gonna let's yeah. zoom in on this Microsoft point here. So yeah, yeah. kind of kind of two issues here. One is obviously you said, you know, you know, uh, technology partnerships with companies like Microsoft. I can't help mm -hmm. but think of, of Jason Barnwell when I think of Microsoft, uh, one of their leaders in uh, legal innovation. Uh, Jason Barnwell always says to me, uses the phrase meeting lawyers where they work. Um, you know, I think for all of the, the, the nonsense, doom and gloom you hear about lawyers, for the most part, they're actually quite creative, smart, talented people, often quite happy. Um, uh, and, and when you get to the, the senior GC level, people, you know, who have been doing creative value added work for, for decades, mm -hmm. uh, Often in legal technology, people are then asking those people to, to do their work fundamentally differently. Now, right. I'm not going to say that there's no work being done by lawyers that is just inherently wrong and should be rethought from the ground up. But my, my assumption typically is that much of what they're doing is, is probably right. How, how, do you, how do you try to do that? How do you try to meet lawyers where they work? So great question. And I sort of see us as coming full circle now, um, you know, going back to, to your point about, you know, or 
your and Elizabeth's point about why we're seeing the market so fragmented, um, it's it's number one really exciting because that means there's a ton of innovation going on, um, you know, a ton of R and D, and um, it's I see it as the technology kind of catching up with the vision, with the um, as some of my friends would say, the art of the possible, mm -hmm. and. It's really great to think of it that way, but what that means in practice is allowing lawyers and other professionals, for salespeople, it's working in Salesforce, you know, whatever platform you're, you're used to working in, um, allowing those folks to work in the ubiquitous tools of the trade for lawyers, it's frankly Microsoft Word and Outlook and Excel, you know, kind of the whole suite of Microsoft, and then capturing that work product and a system of record, record that you can harness data, report on it, track it, and do all of the things that is then going to drive the business, allow the, the law department to actually provide really valuable insights back to the business. So it, that, and that's something that um, I, you know, it's, Agileoft is certainly going in that direction. Uh, our, our new release coming up has a deeper integration with Word, um, allowing lawyers and you know, other professionals to work directly in the system. Frankly, they don't have to look at it. They don't ever have to see Agileoft. Um, they click a button and it's all synced up and it magic, all the data magically goes over to the system of record. Uh, and I really think that that's where we're going. And it's a little bit counter uh, intuitive that, you know, we're sort of going toward a place that we're really familiar with in order to be more innovative, but yeah. it works. Right, you're trying to you're trying to make the uh, innovation as invisible as possible. Yeah, because otherwise, if it's, I mean, it could be the coolest idea in the world, but if nobody uses it, if nobody is actually utilizing the technology, it just becomes shelfware. Yeah, and and you know, I can say from talking to dozens of large corporates and law firms, it is a huge problem. I was on with a you know an Amlaw fifty firm today um, who, who was saying that, that their project this year is to get rid of all the shelfware and use that yep. budget towards things that they're actually going to use and spend more time rolling out. So, you know, I know you all got fantastic user raters, ratings um, in, in the Gartner survey um, of, of usability. And, and, and to me, above and beyond everything, that that is something that is really attractive because that means that people that actually buy it actually like it. Um, I think a lot of people have had the experience we just talked about, which is walking down the halls of the clock uh, or, or other conferences. And, and actually, for the first time in a long time, being pretty wow. They're like, hey, a lot of this stuff is pretty cool, um, but it's useless unless you use it. So let's talk a little bit about APIs. So APIs is really a term that I had never used until a couple of years ago. And now I think we, we, we throw it out there without realizing that most lawyers have almost no idea what an API is, let alone why they should care. Um, this is a big deal for for you all. Um, uh, I, to me, it means I, I play nice with others. Um, you know, it, I guess Danielle or EB, um, what does it mean to API into things, and, and, and how does it help uh, corporate counsel? Yes. Oh, go ahead, EB. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so I, I I have a similar view of APIs that you do, Joe. <laughs> it's basically. <laughs> How it's, well can it's, we? It's this thing, right? Yeah. Can can we actually connect? Can, um, but uh, it, almost everything I I know about APIs, um, I actually learned from Jason Barnwell and Tom Orison over at Microsoft. <laughs> the and you know not a bad place to go to learn, um, no, because uh, they you know they are managing um, one of the largest law legal departments in the world and doing so very effectively. Um, but, you know, their, their strategy, their approach was really driven around APIs and uh, um, stitching together technologies that met each use case mm -hmm. with APIs. And the more seamlessly those are, were integrated, the better. Um, so that there weren't any, you know, clunky handoffs. So again, like um, in the technology, like we discussed before, like like systems speaking to one another without yeah. without the need for human intervention or even like dragging and dropping, just just talking to each other. Yeah, and you know, looking at the market today, yes, we are a CLM provider, um, 
and and Eric Laughlin always you know kind of beats the drum about it's not legal tech it's enterprise tech um, but there's no one technology that is going to meet the entire enterprise's needs so you need those connecting points mm -hmm. no that, absolutely so I'm gonna change gears a little bit again we got suits we got LA law we got Ali McBeal we got a lot of sexiness in the legal industry you do. At, least, at least on television <laughs> Um, but <laughs> you just like, you just kind of like, it was going up and you just dropped like, yeah, oh, right. Mic drop. It's like, a, <laughs> oh, and I just bombed it. I'm Gotta sorry. keep them guessing. No, I, so I, I say that, I say that with love because I think that, I think that in a lot of ways, the legal profession really is sexy. Um, it is, uh, you know, it is where, where law is made and challenged and where, you know, people's rights are upheld or demolished. Um, I, I think in the last decade, uh, the, how do I put it? The, the steam coming off of, uh, of this technological revolution has often led to things being less sexy than they were before. One example is, is the world of emails certainly has led to things like e-discovery where instead of trying cases in court, which was pretty rare even before, um, people are, are, are clicking through, through you know, email for the first six years of their career looking for a needle in a haystack. I'm not sure contracts was ever ridiculously sexy, but, but M&A certainly is. <laughs> files organized, running deals, all that touches on the contract life cycle um, is and should be sexy um, and, and, and should be exciting. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how Agileoft and the world of legal technology can bring some sexy back. <laughs> you want me to, um, yeah, I mean, it's funny. We were talking about, I know, I just, <laughs> I would think about our conversations before the, you know, before all this. And, you know, um, I do think, I mean, transparency, right? I, I, I thought about being a lawyer when I was in high school and then I chickened out. I'm going to say, you know, I went in a complete different direction, uh, STEM. So here you, here you are. Um, but I guess it, it caught it caught up with me and you know starting my consulting career and having to build contracts for you know with just contracts SOW statements of works for work I was going to do for clients and um, it's interesting because in the consulting world um, I think I was sharing that with you is you know the lawyers the GC is just there for limitation of liability and like the very technical things and then everything else is on us like and I'm not a lawyer and but scope of work rates anything else related to um, you know, relief or anything like that is, is on us, right? We have to negotiate with that. So I, I got pulled back, I guess, into a world that I, I thought I had kind of, I wouldn't say avoided, but I, I dodged or I said, okay, I'm not going to go. Um, and it's tedious, right? I mean, you, you realize it's tedious, detail-oriented. You know, you have to pay attention the way you formulate things, you the way you negotiate, right? And, you know, as you look at it from a software company to, and, and sales, salespeople running their deals and, you know, they want to make that deal, but then they know they have to go to legal, right? There is one step in there. And I think the perception is really about, you know, the protector is just going to stop me in my track, right? This is the non-sexy part of the sales process. Let's say that, right? And, you know, I think with, with tools like Agileoft and some of the other tangential, you know, um, providers, uh, I think we're, we're all trying to bring, like, like you said, the sexy back, right? Like, mm -hmm. let's have the GCs not just be seen as protector of the business, but real business partners that can be at the table with us that can even help us negotiate, right? I think some of most lawyers are extremely good negotiators. <laughs> so how do you leverage that, right? How do you leverage that at the, at, you know, and take the, what I call low, low value added tasks, right? Like putting a contract together with basic clauses, right? The, the basic stuff, take that away in the sense of automating that. And then, free time to have the GCs really, or, or, you know, the, 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 the legal ops for whoever, right. In the, in that team to be with the sales, the salesperson, the procurement person, and really help be a business partner and actually drive revenue or drive savings. Right. Yeah. Uh, so how do we bring that back by just providing those automated tools to take the tedious away and then bring that sexy back and that business partner to the table and, and, and change the perception, right? Cause I think it's a lot of perception more than anything else. Right. I love that. So, and, and Danielle, I'm going to pick on you for this next one. Uh, the new release is coming out March 31st. Yep. Can, can you give anyone at least a preview of how they're going to be immediately more sexy after March 31st? Are you allowed? 
Uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, I mentioned a couple of things um, that it's a, a deeper integration with uh, Word and Outlook. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's and there's going to be an updated look and feel. Um, I don't know if that's sexy. Uh, <laughs> sure. Is this, yeah. is this appropriate? Yeah, it is this looks appropriate. Sexy. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, but but the thing that really caught my eye, um, and I, I first saw it, uh, gosh, a month ago now, and and I remember Joe, I like immediately texted you. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to see this. This is so cool. It's freaking That's magic. Right. Yeah. Um, was seeing the the agile contract assistant work in Word. And just having everything automatically pop up, have your clause library pop up, have, um, you know, click a button and you can see the red lines between your, stand your standard, um, you know, your preferred template clause and that the language in the contract, click another button and, you know, update the language in the contract. I don't know, for nerds like us, that's pretty sexy. Yeah, no, I mean, look, and you know, it's sexy enthusiasm. Uh, you did immediately call me, you were- I did. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's infectious like the fact that you know you immediately saw the value and 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 are excited to get it kind of you know in, into the customers hands so um, we only have like a minute uh, anything else you want to make sure our, our audience out there knows before we uh, call it a day maybe you go first um, you know I think one of the things, you know, just to, I think I would summarize, right? I think it's an extremely hot market, um, CLM in general, legal tech, right? Legal innovation, to be very honest. I think it's something that if, if some, some of, of the legal profession hasn't looked at it yet, I think it's a great time to do it. I think there's even investment opportunities, believe it or not, <laughs> for, for the lawyers to, to, to be part of that change, right? Yes. Um, so I would think that's, that's extremely, uh, extremely exciting and extremely valuable to actually have that profession with us and, and be able to shape, you know, shape the, the, the future of legal tech. Uh, I think, you know, from, a, from an Agile Off perspective, you know, I think there's a lot of new things that are happening with the company, with working with you and some of the new partners that we have. So, you know, reach out, uh, you know, we're always open for a conversation. Uh, it doesn't, you know, no strings attached, I'm going to say, but, uh, you know, we're, <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, it's, 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 um, you know, sometimes you get more value from a conversation than somebody who's going to buy, but versus, you know, it could uh -huh. be on our product roadmap and say, guys, you're not going into the right direction. Uh, oh, Hey, something super cool that we haven't thought through that our CPO hasn't thought through. So I'm seeing that in the more, you know, I've seen a lot of, amazing stories coming out of just conversations that didn't have only a buying process or a buying, you know, mindset behind it. So that's where I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in the, Hey, reach out. We'd love to have a conversation. Doesn't mean anything. Um, and then last, but not least, I think it's what we've been talking about, the sexy back. Let's, let's go for it. Let's be, you know, we would love to be the provider of bringing sexy back to the legal department. I love it. Uh, I want to get censored it. soon. Careful, but um, right. So if this whole conversation doesn't get bleeped out, I want to thank I know. <laughs> TV. Of course, thank Latera TV. This is so much fun. They put a lot of work into this, and uh, I will see you next week on Future Law.